The United States, of course, fought World War II in two places, in Europe and also the Pacific. Ted News anchor John Apicello has a closer look at an Eagle Rock native who spent the war fighting against the Axis power of Japan. Yeah, guys, it's not often, first of all, that you get a chance to talk to someone who actually fought in battles where major movies have been made about these battles. They were so important. That is the case tonight, as I had the honor of talking to an Eagle Rock native who lived it. Marion Knoll, Eagle Rock High School, class of 42, enlisted in the U.S. Navy with his brother-in-law to avoid being drafted into the Army. He knew he was going to be drafted, so he said, I don't want to dig a foxhole. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to dig a foxhole. What he would do was keep the diesel engines in the LST or landing ship tank 779 running smoothly. They carried supplies and artillery for key battles in the Pacific theater. Marion's journey landed him in Hawaii in Christmas of 44, but soon his ship would be front and center in one of the most important conflicts in the Pacific, the Battle of Iwo Jima, a tiny island that had massive strategic impact on the war. The night before, we said, what are we fooling with a little eight square mile island? But the main reason for us taking this, it had two or three airstrips. And if we could get those airstrips, our bombers that was bombing Japan, some crippled or out of fuel, or what not, they could land at Evo. Knoll's LST was the first to reach the Marines with crucial heavy artillery. The battle produced the most iconic image of the entire conflict as the Marines raised a flag atop Mount Suribachi. The first one was too small, so they sent a runner to find a bigger one. That came from Marion's ship, LST-779. It so helped it happen that our communication officer had been scrounging back at Pearl Harbor. It was four feet by eight feet. He said that's way too large for our ship, but he gave it to this Marine. The Marine took off up the mountain. From Iwo Jima, the Battle of Okinawa was next for Marion and his shipmates. Then they prepared for Operation Downfall, the invasion of Japan. That didn't need to happen because the atomic bombs were dropped, leading to Japan's surrender. But that didn't stop Marion from reaching Tokyo. I look up, I look across, I said, Sir, I said, that ship over there has got my next door neighbor from Eagle Rock on it. I said, could I go over and see him? He said, that's most unusual. A next door neighbor yeah. being halfway around the world. Right next to you. Sasebu Harbor, Japan, <laughs> he came. <laughs> What are you doing over here? <laughs> uh, anyway, that was a highlight of, that I can't forget. And the next door neighbor's name was Ethan Rogers. Want to get that out for you. What an amazing story, meeting half a world away. And just like you said, John, earlier in, in the show, I could talk about this man and his stories for another half hour, so I better say goodbye for now.